All right, so uh, this is the, the coding part of the lab, all right? So I've already described the, the problem and what we need to do. And so now we will just uh, use our Linux environment here to uh, view the file. And then we are going to write some Python code with T-Shark uh, that will allow us to extract the PCAP data for our IoT device detection problem. So here we have, I have highlighted the, um, the file. So this is our input file. Remember, this is the file that contains all of our packet captures for the five IoT devices plus you know, other servers and hosts that we don't need. And so we need to basically write some code that extracts this. So the first thing I want to do is, uh, this is, you can see it's a PCAP file, and I just want to uh, open it with Wireshark just so that we can see it. So as you can see here, I have all the packets, right? All the packets that we've collected. You know, we have some ICMP packets, you know, that are not related, and then some TCP packets, etc. And so within these TCP packets, we can see we have a source IP of, uh, you know, 182, 168, 142. So these are the things that we will use to filter out what we're looking for. So for instance, here, you can open the TCP, uh, you know, header, and then we can look at the fields. So these fields actually, things like source port, destination port, uh, you know, sequence numbers, act numbers, window size, etc., are the fields or the features that we will use. Remember, in the end, we're going to end up using about 19, 18 to 19 features um, for this problem. All right, so anyway, this is a P regular PCAP file. You can open it in, you know, regular Wireshark. Right? We don't actually have to use Wireshark here, except if you want to, you know, as a, as a practitioner, you, you know, a cybersecurity professional, you want to maybe uh, research the packets, you know, and look at the, the features, et cetera, to select which ones you think would be best. Probably what I would say is just use all of them, and then that should give you, you know, a lot of information that you can then later on filter, filter down to something a little bit more concise. All right, so now that we've looked at the data, we can close Wireshark, right? And now we can proceed to our uh, terminal. So we will go to the terminal here. So uh, now that we've looked at the PCAP file, we are ready to write our feature extraction code from that PCAP file. So we open our terminal here, all right? And you know we are at the folder that we need Okay, so um, I have a little uh, script here that's going to be our starter code. Uh, this is from your handout, you know, remember from your, from your lab. And then we have two folders, filtered PCAPs, which is this one, which is going to be the output of our extract features script, and then original PCAP. So if I navigate to original PCAP, CD original, right, and I go in here, I do ls-l, you can see I have my PCAP files, a really large uh, file here, the TCP dump file. So this will be my input, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to open up extract features uh, PCAP. So I'm gonna use nano extract features underscore PCAP, all right? And this is the, the file that I'm going to use. So it, it already is populated with some data here, okay? And I'm going to then um, just use, this is basically like little comments. So for instance, here we have in the script, it says uh, the first part is a comment. So whenever you see in Python three double quotes and then another three double quotes, it basically means a comment. So for instance, here I'm saying that um, Assistants are something like 192.168.1. You know, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? So that's basically what this implies. So we're just providing the last octet of the IP address. So if these are all the assistants, these are the cameras, these are the miscellaneous, these are the mobile, and these are the power outlets, right? So each device is represented as something like this. And where we have a pound sign there, we will have 
uh, so the pound sign is replaced by the number in the list. All right, so by the number in the list, so I'm going to move this down in the list. So assistant is you know 182.168.1.111 and so on. All right, so that's just a comment there to kind of illustrate this a little bit. Um, for the libraries, this is just you know usually in the machine learning pipeline, the cleaning part or the pre-processing is usually you know uh, it, it can be a lot of work. It can be even 60 to 80 percent of the work that you do. And it sometimes requires you to use your own programming skills. So as you can see here, we're not even using anything like advanced libraries like, Pyth uh, like Pandas or NumPy. We're just using standard Python uh, modules like OS and Globe. All right, so we're going to be using these. Then the next step is because we are using T Shark, T Shark is a tool. Um, that is very similar to using Wireshark. So it's going to make our coding a lot simpler. You know, we can do this you know, in 20, 20 lines of code or so. We can basically write a nice little script that takes raw PCAP files and creates vector space model uh, code. So the first part here, IP filter, you can see is just really creating a dictionary. So here, uh, by using the two curly brackets, we create a dictionary. So we create a dictionary, um, and then over here we populate the dictionary. So uh, you can see here IP filter now. The key is TCP mobile or TCP outlet or TCP assistant or TCP camera or TCP miscellaneous. So this script I'm using actually uh, was written by a couple of my uh, students. Uh, so you know Drew Johnson and Evan Brady. And so, you know, they did a really good job here with this code and, you know, um, I'm sharing it with you guys. So I, I wanted to give them credit for, for the script. Um, so, so here we have, you know, the filter, right? We have the filters, as I said, it's basically a dictionary and the dictionary just holds the individual filters that we're going to use. So we have a filter for mobile, a filter for outlet, a filter for assistance, camera, and miscellaneous. So here we can look at the first filter. Now these filters are actually pretty consistent with the way that you would write a filter in Wireshark itself. So you can, you know, if you've used Wireshark before, then this should be, uh, you know, clearer for you. So uh, the filter basically says, notice it's a string, and that's why it's in double quotes. And then within the string, we have single quotes for the filter itself. So we are looking, remember that that PCAP that we just saw had ICMP packets. It had all kinds of types of packets. And so we really just need the TCP packets. And really, we only want the TCP packets that match these IP addresses up, up here, right? So these are the IP addresses of the IoT devices that we want. And so we have TCP. So we want all packets that are TCP and where the IP source is equal to 192.168.145. So that basically means the mobile device, right? And so that's the TCP mobile. And the same applies for this one. So you can see here, I'm gonna move this down. Okay, and you can see that's the, the filter for TCP outlet. So it's TCP with those two IP sources. Then if I scroll down here for TCP assistant, it's the same. I'm gonna move these down. Right, and this one, as you can see, it's a lot, and that's the last one. So I have here the, you know, that filter, right? That's for all the multiple IP addresses. Then I do the same for camera. It's TCP, and where the IP source sources are these. So I move it down. And then finally, for miscellaneous, I do this, right? And it's going to be these. Uh, here we add the uh, backslash just so that we can move the line for readability, uh, finish this line on the next uh, new line. So those are the filter expressions that I'm going to use. Once you have the filter expressions, we can proceed to write our code and you'll see it's actually not that much. Um, another thing we need to do is, of course, as we get the data from the PCAP file and we filter it with T-Shark, we need to take the packets that we extracted with the labels and place those in an output file. So in this case, I'm going to create the file label feature 
uh, and I'm going to call it label feature and I'm just going to say IOT here. So I'm going to say IOT. This is my, you know, vector space model. Notice this is just going to be a simple CSV file. Uh, if you remember, you know, I kind of said that's the more straightforward of all the formats. And then once we create this file, we should be able to read it in Weka easily or in sklearn easily or in TensorFlow with just some minor modifications. We add the A here, that just means append, so we're going to add items to the file. Okay? The next thing we want to do is um, we want to write the first line. The first line in the file is just going to be the header of the CSV file. So for instance here, we're going to follow this format. Now it's really important that we always do this consistently. So we're going to say label feature dot write lines and then we write the first line. So it's going to be label. Then notice, these are the actual features. IP length, IP header length, IP flags, TTL, protocol, IP ID, IP checksum, source port, destination port, sequence number. Then we have act number, window size, TCP header length, TCP flags, TCP length, TCP checksum, TCP stream, TCP urgent pointer, and so on. All right, so these are the, the features that we are going to use. Notice that the la it's basically a string that we are writing, and notice that at the end you might see this the, the new line character backslash n, which basically means it's like an enter. So it's good. one row, it ends, and then the next thing will be written on the next line. All right, so that's basically all you have in your starter code. All right, so we can also write here, just so that we know we've ended, we can say print done. All right, so we can do print done here. And so now we are ready to proceed with the rest of our code. Okay, so now that we have this, the next step is we need to iterate through the input file. So we are going to write a for loop. So I'm going to do for, a for loop. And this for loop will allow me to iterate through the input file now, as we know, um, let me say this. If I do ls-l, my file is in original pcap. All right, so I want to extract all the files in original pcap, read them, right, and then process the data. So to do that, and I'm going to write a for loop, okay, and I'm going to say for original, for original, in, I'm going to use glob dot glob, which allows me, it's a way that I can get all the files from a directory, right? So I'm going to say uh, for original in glob glob single quotes. I'm going to specify the location where it is. So I'm just going to say original pcap. This is the name of the folder where the file is located in the current working directory. So for original pcap and then a, a wild card for all files in that folder with the extension pcap. It just so happens that there's only one file in there. And then I'm going to do colon, then indentation, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to also call the filters. So I'm going to do 4k, which is the filter in IP filter, IP filter is of course this one over here. So those are the filters, so for K and IP filter dot keys. All right, so I just, I'm gonna call all the individual filters and now I can apply them to my problem. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. So I got the file, I got all the filters, and now I'm going to run the module os.system. And this basically is equivalent to running the terminal. So imagine anything that you could type on the terminal, basically you can type in here now. And so we are going to use t -shark. So I'm going to do t -shark. All right, now t -shark needs to be installed, obviously. Uh, in the handout, this is like a pseudo app get installed t -shark. Uh, kind of a thing, but the explanation should be provided in the lab handout. So, T Shark 
dash r, which basically reads, so we are going to read the original. So we are going to read original. That's this file. So basically we read that file. And then we're going to say that we want dash w, lowercase w, with a, another dash, which basically it helps us. This, this is for writing to a file, but in our case, we are going to redirect to a file. And then I'm going to do dash capital Y, and that's for the filter that I want to apply. So I'm actually going to apply several filters uh, to the file. So every time I grab the file and I, I apply one filter. So that filter looks through the entire file and looks for only packets that match that filter. Those get extracted and redirected to an output file. Then the next iteration, the same file, but another filter, and it performs the exact same task. So I'm going to, I'm going to do here plus IP filter, which is the dictionary, K. Okay, so I do IP filter K. Okay, that's the filter that I'm applying. Plus, and then now I write again my string, so I'm just going to redirect. Uh, so that's the redirection in Linux, and I'm going to redirect to the folder, folder filtered. So I have, remember, I have two directories in this current working directory. Uh, one is the original PCAPs and the other one is the filtered PCAPs. So now I'm going to do filtered underscore PCAP and the string here, and then I need to specify the name of the file. So remember, we are going to create a five files, right? So from the original input file, now we are creating five individual files. Each one contains only packets belonging to that filter. And we have five filters, so we're going to have five files. So that's what I accomplish here by doing k plus double quote dot pcap. All right, and that's it. That's you know, pretty much I took the original file, applied some filters with T Shark, and now I'm able to create five individual file pcap files, each one containing the pa only the packets that belong to that type of IoT device. All right, now once I've completed this, I can go ahead and do the next part. So I'm just going to, you know, add a little line there, a little bit of line there. And now it comes the next step. And so the next step is now I need to grab those filtered files and convert them. Those five files need to be converted into one single file. This single file is going to capture the vector space model. All right, so to do that, I'm going to write another for loop. So I'm going to say for filtered file, right? In, again, glob dot glob. And now this is going to be double quote, double quote, filtered PCAP folder. So this is the folder that now has the five files. I'm going to grab all files in there that have an extension PCAP. So I'm going to use, just to be consistent with the previous one, I'm going to use single quotes here. All right. So filtered PCAP, all PCAPs. So I grab that and that's colon here. All right. So one, two, three, four. All right. Now, once I have that, I'm going to manipulate the file a little bit. So I'm going to take a file name. So I'm going to do filtered file. And I'm going to split this. So I'm going to do dot split. And I'm going to split this on forward slash. So actually, this is a good point uh, for me to actually run the code. I just want to see what's in there. So I'm going to change this to W instead of a pen. And now I'm going to run this. I want to do two things, actually. I'm going to do also print filtered file. Okay. So I'm just going to do this and run the code and see what happens. Okay, and then I'm going to I'm going to also print file name. All right, so let me save this. All right, so now I'm going to run python. All right, and there you go. So it basically gives me 
you know, it prints out the name as I was saying, so it's giving me the full path. It's filtered PCAP, TCP assistant, TCP outlet. These are the five individual files in there, and then when I do a split, I kind of just remove the filtered PCAP part, and that just leaves the name of the file. So that's really what I want because that's going to be my class. And so now I can proceed to, you know, with my code. I mean, we're making good progress here, actually. So another little trick I can do is I can just add at the end of this the following minus one and this by adding this entry I should now have the the last element in the list. So remember that whenever you do a split you take all those elements in the split and they are assigned to a new variable which basically creates a list. And then this this here would now only uh, select the last element which is the name of the file. So let's try that. Do control X, I'm gonna run it again. And you can see now that I've removed the, the filtered part and I just have here the name of the file. So that's what I want because those will be my classes. All right, so let's go back to the code. So once we have this part complete, we no longer need this print, so we can take it out. All right. And now um, we can just, uh, this is going to be the label that we're going to use for each sample. All right, so here we grab the file. We know the, all, all the packets in this file belong to, let's say, camera. And so all those packets, as we create them in the vector space model, should have a label of camera. And so that's what we want. So we're going to create a variable label. And all I have to do is I'm going to take file name file name dot replace and I'm just going to get rid of that pcap extension all right so I'm going to say um, single quote here dot pcap comma and I'm going to replace that with nothing so that gives me an even cleaner version of for the class right so if I do here print label all right, I'm going to run this yet again. You can see now that I've gotten rid of the PCAP part and I just have what they are. All right, and so that's my labels there. So now that I'm ready with that part, the next step should be to convert every single packet into its feature vector representation and then to annex this label to each vector. So if you remember when we wrote the headings, we said that the first line is the headings of the vector space and the first column is the label. So that's going to be like camera or assistant. Then it'll be comma separated and followed by IP length, IP header length, and so on. So these are the values that I, current, that I now need to uh, get. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here. And now I'm going to craft my T-Shark command. So the T this T-Shark command uh, is really the last part of this code that's hard uh, and it's not really even hard it's just that there's 19 features so it's going to be long in that sense because we have to put in all those features that we want to extract so uh, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft a string I'm going to call it the T shark command and now T shark command will be T shark so remember this is as the command as you would type it on the terminal. So T shark dash R double quote. Let me get rid of that one. Double quote plus. So we're going to say that I need to read the file. So in this case, it's going to be the filtered. It's going to be this, right? So it's going to be filtered file. Okay, filtered file is the one that I need to read. So I'm going to do filtered file then concatenate plus and now I need to specify which fields I want for every single packet so I'm going to say dash T fields dash E backslash and now I'm just going to list, list all the elements that I need so this is uh, similar to an Excel right when you do a um, or in, in databases, right? Like in SQL, you have a big data set and then you run a query and the data set just becomes smaller. So this is a similar logic here, a similar approach. We have a big PCAP file, 
all packets belonging to camera. Now we're going to apply T-Sharks like a filter and it's just going to take the fields that we want. So that file already has every row is a packet if you want to think of it that way. And so now every row will still continue to be a packet but it's, it's going to be a packet in a specific output format or it's still going to be a row in a specific output format and with only the fields that we want. And so we do dash T fields dash E and now we list the pack the field. So from the IP header we want length dash E IP dot header length dash E IP dot flags dash E IP dot TTL time to live dash backslash dash E IP protocol dash E IP ID dash E checksum so IP dot check sum dash e tcp source port tcp dot so now notice i've moved from the ip header to the tcp header so i do uh, check sum was the last one of the ip now i'm going to do tcp source and then i do dash e tcp dot destination port dash e tcp sequence dash e so tcp ack dash e tcp window size dash e tcp header length and we're almost done dash but as you can see this is always tedious right you know we haven't done any machine learning here we're just taking data raw data and converting it into vector space and this usually takes this is where the the coding where you're you know you have to be creative with your code efficient etc tcp dot flags dash e tcp length dash e tcp checksum dash e tcp stream dash e tcp urgent pointers that's the last one so tcp dot urgent underscore pointer and that's the last one so as you can see you know uh we could have done 40 features obviously that would have been a lot of typing so there are other there might be other more efficient ways uh, but I think this kind of illustrates what we have to do um, as you can see so just to summarize the command we write is t -shark .read. we read in filtered file which is the, you know each of the five files that we have and then we apply dash t fields and then we just specify the individual fields that we want with the e all right and then at the end, we add this double quote over here to close the original opening double quote. All right, once we've done this part in our code, we can just, um, so every iteration, every one of the five iterations, we are going to grab the filtered packet. So let's do one, two, three, four. And now we want to, receive all those in a new um, variable so I'm just gonna say all features and I'm going to assign to it the result of running the command so to run the command I do OS dot P open and I open the actual command T shark all right so this will basically run this command kind of create a you know a set and then I'm going to read that set by doing dot read. All right, so I have my set there. And then this, you know, I'm just gonna typecast it into a string. So I'm just gonna typecast this into a string. So basically this is where we run our t -shark command. So we created this t -shark command here. In this step we called OS, right? We run the command, right? And we read the results of that we convert it into a string and assign it to all features now that we've done this this data is actually tab separated so the next thing we want to do is the all the data that we read from is still kind of in the pcap format and pcap is using tabs so i want to change those tabs to comma separated 
why it's really just a choice i guess you know it would still work if it's tab separated but you know i already committed to using commas over here right when i wrote this header so i have to be consistent and so i'm going to replace that but that should be pretty easy to do so i'm going to do uh, all features again and i'm just going to replace uh, in all features so in all features i'm going to do dot replace so i'm going to find all instances of a tab and i'm going to replace the tabs with commas all right so this is a good uh, point to print out the contents of our data so let's try to print what's in all features all right so let's do print all features let's see what's in there so i'm going to control x y all right and i'm going to run the code have an error here all right so uh so we were getting an error uh, when we ran this code and that error was here in the t-shark command so whenever you're using these uh, backslashes here you have a uh, issue sometimes or you you know you have like uh, you go here you do an enter right and then you do like that and it's just not properly formatted so you'll have to play with it if I do this and run it it is now running so really all i did i'll just show you how my code looks when it's correct so when we had the error we had these these little green squares here those little green squares so if you get rid of those for instance if you see them anywhere in your code that might be causing the problem also though you could just get rid of these right get rid of them see how that came up so if i do you know it gives me an error so now if i go back to the code so if i just do this and add the backslash there and just make sure that your command basically looks like mine here or also just get rid of these but but if you get rid of them it has your code has to be in one line here i you know i have multiple lines just because of readability of the course but it's not entirely necessary. But anyway, so now we have our command. Let me run it one last time. All right, and you can see the code is currently running. So that's what we want. So we have done there, so it finished. So now we'll go back to the code. I'm not gonna change it anymore so that it, we don't run into that issue. But basically we have our t -shark command. Remember it's a t -shark dash read we read filtered file remember we're iterating in a loop five times and then we specify that dash t the fields that we want and it's all of these so ip length and so on all the way to i tcp urgent pointer once we have that we go over here and we run os right and we run the t shark command all right and then we read the, the results of that uh pass it through a string filter so we convert them into string and then we store the data in all features all right now the last part of this is now we just want to print the contents of all features notice here we took all features did dot replace and anything that was a tab was converted into a comma so now if you run print all features you know run it again we can see that the features are extracted, right? So you can see that in, in the code here, all of these values are comma separated, right? So all these values um, are comma separated. So this is, let's say one record here, right? All of these are comma separated and they contain values that we need, that we extracted from the individual uh, header. So these are, should be our features, right? So that's basically, our process data. All right, so we can go back to our code now. So scroll all the way down here and we can get rid of this print all features. And now we're almost ready. The last part is we simply need to write the contents of all features into our output file. 
So we have our output file up here. It was called label feature, right? So we need to do a label feature, write lines, and now write all features. So let's go ahead. Now, one last thing is we have our data, let's say as an entire file separated by commas, but it is also separated by uh, new line characters, right? So we can go ahead and take that big uh, CSV file, split it on default split lines function, and we're going to create, instead of having one file, we're going to create a list. So what I can do here is I'm going to do all features, all features list, and this is going to be equal to all features dot split, split lines, all right? So split lines. So that's, you know, like saying all the rows are now an item. And so now I have this and I, I can basically have this little file. So, or this little list. So once I've created all features list, let's print it out and see what's in it. So I'm going to do all features list. All right, so I have that. And now I can run my code again. Do a clear here. Now if I run it, and there you go. You can see that it's basically creating a list of packets, but not the packets, only the feature vector representation of those packets. You can see that here. So the list is indicated by this square bracket. You can see it here. Then we can look at the last entry. Notice that there's a comma here. That basically means that this is the start of a new feature vector, and you can see it here. Single quote all the way to this single quote, that is a feature vector made up of these features, 52, 20, these ha you know, hacks and, and so on. So these are all the values of that feature vector. Then we have another feature vector here. There's a comma here. So that's the start of another feature vector, which runs until there. And so, you know, that's just, we're playing around with our data. So we're playing around with our data here. Uh, just to make, you know, so that we can have all the feature vectors now in a list. So now I'm going to go back to the code. We're almost done at this point. All we have to do is print out the result. So I'm going to delete this last entry and now do the final uh, for loop. So I'm just going to say for features in all features list, right? And now I can print out my results. So for each file, I grab the file, grab the name to use as the label. So remember, I have the label and that's something else I need to use. And then I have the T-Shark command. I apply it to the file and then I extract all the feature vectors from that file. And now I'm just going to write them out into my output file. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. And basically, I'm just going to say label feature dot write lines. And I write out label plus comma separated plus, which is concatenation features. So remember, each one of these features is a feature vector and it should be a row with the label in front of it. So it's the label, then the feature vectors, and then a new line character. So I'm going to say plus backslash n. And that's it. We are at this point done with the code. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to delete these files so I can run them again since I'm appending on them. Okay, so let's try that again. So I'm gonna do ls. I'm gonna go into filtered pcap cd filtered pcap ls and they are gone All right so they were deleted there's nothing in there so now i'm going to go ahead and run my code again clear and actually you can see if i do ls dash l my new label feature iot has been created so the file actually does exist now so i can open it nano label and there it is, right? So this is my, this is the output file. Notice that it has several times I've, I've uh, written to it the, he the header, 
right, the header of it. So I can get rid of this header uh, simply by delete, you know, this repetition of the header simply by deleting the file. So what has happened is that if you notice, whenever we wrote, we were actually appending. So every time I was running it to debug it, I was actually appending the header again. So to fix this problem, all I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this file and run all of this again. So I'm going to say, so rm label feature IOT. So that should be gone now. Okay, so all I have is my extract features PCAP file. Um, filtered PCAP should be empty. So I'm just going to check one last time. So ls-l. So that's empty. So then now I'm ready to run my code. So I'm going to run Python extract features and that should create my new output file. So by running this, okay, it's done. All right, so now I do ls-l and I have label feature IOT. Notice that it's a much larger file now. It's really large. Label feature IOT and I can do nano label feature IOT and there it is right so now I have the headings here and I have the values that I extracted so for instance this is the label and then this is TCP miscellaneous TCP you know all of these are miscellaneous labels with the actual data the actual features that we have so if I keep going down there's gonna be a lot of miscellaneous over here right many with all their data I can also do cat all right and there you go so we can see the last one here is now tcp mobile but we can see there you know all the data is in there all the mobile ones there's outlets tcp outlet here so that's the class and these are the features that we extracted from the packet all right and the first line is actually the header so that's basically our code uh, we went from raw pcap files to one single file that has the extracted feature vectors and corresponding labels all properly formatted for us to perform some machine learning so now in the next step will be now to take this data and we're just going to load it into uh, weka just to really quickly uh, see that we can run do some machine learning on this data set